Hi, and thank you for joining me, Joe Onwin, also known as Flojo, on another Power Platform video. Today, we're looking at Power Automate Desktop. We're going to be looking at dates. The reason why we're going to be looking at this is how we can take the current date and time and compare it to another static date so that we can decide if today's date is before or after a certain date. Now, why would you use this then? Well, you may be retrieving some data from a particular database or something like that, and you need to only do something if today's date is before a certain date, or maybe you need to do something if it is after a certain date. Now, this type of scenario happens quite a lot, and I've got the perfect way of doing this for you. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can actually achieve this. So firstly, what we need to do is we need to get the current date and time. To do that, we just use get current date and time. And all I'm doing is I'm getting the current date and time of the system time zone and storing it in a current date time variable. Then what we need is that we need a static date. So this is the date that you're going to compare to. So all I'm doing is I'm setting a variable of static date and then I'm setting the date. So I'm going to use the 1st of January 2025. So I do 2025-01-01. So now we've got the 1st of January 2025 as our static date. We've got the current date time. But what we want to do is we want to convert our current date and time to the date format that we're currently using in our static date. To do this, it's very simple. You just use convert date time to text. So in the convert date time to text, you pass the current date time variable. You then choose the format to use custom, and then you can then just manually enter the custom format. Now to do the format that we used on the static date, you just do small y four times, dash, capital M, capital M, dash, small d, small d. So that's year, month, and day. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see the sample here so you can see exactly how it formats, which is perfect. And then we're going to overwrite our current date time variable. So we don't have multiple variables stacking up through our flow. We're just going to overwrite that because that's the date, current date time that we're going to be using. So just pass current date time in here again. And what that does then is when it gets the current date time, sets the static date, then it's going to take our conversion from the current date time at that particular point and save over it. So then we have an output of just the date in the correct format. Then we don't have additional uh, variables just cluttering up our flow that we don't need. So at this point then we've done three actions. We've got current date time, we've got a static date time, we've formatted our current date time. Then this is where we're going to be doing the, convert, the the actual comparison. Like we're going to say is after if the um, particular current date is after the static date, if we're checking to see if it is after, or we're going to be using is before to see if the current date is before the static date. So this is what I was mentioning earlier. If you're looking to see if today's date is after the static date, we simply do set variable and we're creating an is after variable. So you know it is after, or there'll be a true or a false. However, if you want to check if it is before, we'll use the is before variable and then it will be true or false. So how you then do this then is in the set variable section, you use the percent signs and then you refer to the particular um, variable that you're going to be com comparing. So we're going to use current date time as the first one. And we're going to say is the current date time greater than the static date. So is the current date time later is after the static date. So this should return false because the current date time we're currently in 2024 um, and the 1st of January 2025 is after, so if we run this, this should be coming back as false. And then if we set is before, we just do the opposite. This time we do current date time, but we do less than the static date. Is today less than the actual date that we're checking against? So if it is, then we should get a true. If not, we'll get false. Okay, so let's run this and see what we get. 
Okay, so the current date is the 17th of June, 2024. The date we're comparing against is the 1st of January, 2025. So is the 17th of June, 2024 after the 1st of January, 2025? Obviously we know that, so it's going to be false, right? So it's not after that. So we get a false value back. And then we can check if it is before that. So is the 17th of June before the 1st of January, 2025? Yes, it is. So we get a true answer back. So that is how you can do the comparisons, but let's just check to make sure this is working. So what happens then if I set this to the 1st of January, 2024? We know that the 17th of June, 2024 is after the 1st of January, 2024. So let's run this again. And now you can see it's the opposite, right? Because we know it is after, so is after is now true. The 17th of June, 2024 is after the 1st of January, 2024. Perfect. And is the 17th of June, 2024 before the 1st of January, 2024? No, it's not. Uh, so we then end up with a false. So that is how you can do a check be, be, for a date before or a date after a static date using the current date and time. And you can do this with any dates. It's not just the current date and time or a static date and time. If you've got two dates that you've pulled from a database and you wanna check against them, you can do exactly the same thing by simply substituting the variables here um, but you can still use the same methodology of is after and is before. I hope that's helped. Uh, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you've made it all the way to the end, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you and I'll see you again on the next one.